Hello everyone and welcome to Realistic Realtors. We're with Superior Coaching School. And you know what we're all about? We're all about old school and new school way approach of how to get your real estate career kicked off. We're all about action. We're all about getting you guys to take action today where you can start marketing your business and make your career a successful one. And today we're up to volume 16 and we're talking about branding yourself. Yeah, so let's start with a great quote. Um, Because branding yourself, I think really this comes back to um, identifying what you want to represent. And so the CEO of eBay, um, Scott Cook, says, a brand is no longer what you tell your customer it is. It's what your customers tell each other it is. So, Bill, what do you think about this? I think we have a more educated consumer out there compared to years ago. um, And we just can't pitch something. We have to take years to brand ourselves And we have to brand ourselves as an expert, as a realtor in that market. So those consumers will educate each other and view us as an expert. Yeah, so we'll do a a double take. Uh, Get another quote. That's that's exactly what you said. Is Warren Buffett. It takes 20 years to build an image for yourself. And you can take 20 seconds to destroy it. Gone. Right? It's gone. So uh, so there you go. I think uh, that's a great way to get us started on branding. Because I, I can't think of a better mindset to put us all into um, I'm realizing how long it takes to build a brand and what the key importance is, the audience, right? So, Bill, who would you say is your audience for your marketing? Okay, so my audience is uh, usually age group and price point for myself. I've been selling real estate for about 14 years. Um, so my target audience price range is probably 30 to, you know, retirement age. Um, and price point is probably, Nick, more about three hundred to six hundred thousand um, dollars that's kind of where my niche is once I go under 30 I don't have a connection uh, with that age group so I have to brand a little differently yeah and so my my target audience would be under 40 or maybe primarily under 35 Millennials right so um, people that are gonna have a larger social media presence online um, people that would see my content online um, and so when we're defining our target audience we then have to identify what is the method of communication that's going to grab their attention the most, right? So what we want to do is realize what niche are we going to create for ourselves to grab their attention. So, Bill, you mentioned uh, people that are uh, already probably already homeowners yep. that have more established lives. That means what? They probably have a family. Yeah. Um, so how would you grab their attention and get, and get their attention? Well, obviously, what you just said, the niche I'm going after are family-oriented. So I'm going to target family-oriented you know, outlets, a community, whatever, uh, to get their attention and tr- try to relate to them. You know, maybe I'll place an ad uh, about my family. Maybe it'll be something on Facebook where I'm, I'm in their age group. It's more family stuff. Maybe I just came from uh, my daughter's high school graduation where I'll appeal to someone in their, their 50s. Yeah, and it, even in your advertising, it could be things that like that. You can, so it might be you waving goodbye, you know, as your kids are, uh, running out to college or, you know, stuff like that. Things that are relatable for your uh, peer, uh, people that might need to downsize because now they're empty nesters. Now sure. they're saying, okay, maybe it's time to sell, right? So that you can play to that in your marketing. And I would do the same thing when I'm branding myself. Um, I'll have my phone in a lot of them or I'm on the laptop or I'm doing things online um, and I'm connecting with people. And so a lot of your clients are first time buyers. So how do you connect with those people? Well, you got to go target the areas that they are uh, looking in, which right now is online. So over 50% of all home buyers, all purchases last year across the United States, uh, over 50%, the the buyer found the home that they ended up buying and they saw it online first before they saw it. That marks a huge shift. We're now over 50%. So half of the people that you took out to see a home, they basically told you what homes you want to see, right? So I actually have um, some some uh, showings scheduled later this week, and there the entire list the buyer told me, right? Does that not? How different is that from even like ten years ago? Uh, major difference. You know, when I was branding myself fifteen years ago, it was I wasn't really concerned with you know branding myself how they were going to perceive me. It was more like the value I could give them. It could be, you know, listing their house, getting it sold in 30 days. I'm trying to show a value. But now we really have to be concerned about branding ourselves. You know, you have a marketing company, right? Um, 
you know, what are the one of the ways when you develop that marketing company, how are you going to reach your audience? How are you going to brand that marketing company? Well, what, every consultation I've ever been on, when when realtors come up to me or a small business, or I've, you know, we marketed for doctors and all kinds of people, lawyers. Uh, when whenever I go to a consultation, it always starts with who is your target audience, what are their pain points, and what is your value. And if you define those three things, audience pain points of your audience sure. and what value you can provide that's your value proposition right that helps you get your point across and then how do we develop marketing that communicates these three things in a way they'll relate to so as you mentioned it's family yep right so that might be how you communicate that that marketing and for you i you, you what do you market like brew pubs you know <laughs> i mean your age group you go out you know my age group we're having dinner friday night you know watching uh you know Frozen with kids or something yeah. <laughs> like that, um, and where you guys are out. Well, what, so I tend to think of it the other way. So because uh, my age group, millennials under 35, they're going to be always maybe more connected to social media and their phones. To me, it's ease of use. I say, look, I will help you build a list, and then you tell me which homes you want to see. It used to always be the opposite, right, where you, would, you might have a list. Um, like I had a, a, an older gentleman who, who reached out to me and, and was looking to, to buy and sell. Um, and he basically told me, well, Nick, what's your list? Because I talked with this other realtor and they have their own list. And you know, I had to educate him a little bit because he hadn't bought a home in 20 years, right? You know, sure. he's old school, right? And he said, you know, and he said, Nick, you know, I, I talked with the, this other realtor. They have a special list. I said, I said, listen, everybody's got the same list nowadays. We all have the same MLS. We can all look in the same places. Yep. That's a big difference, right? A big shift. Sure. Um, so what I tell when my clients is, look, you know, it's it's I, I'm I, I lay back a little bit more. I say, look, we're all looking at the same things. I'm going to give you a, a couple things to look at because I will look, but I know you're also going to be looking. So I want you to save those and send them to me, and I can set up and arrange the appointments. And so I I, I gear more towards the ease of use. Yes, and with the Facebook, the LinkedIn, the Instagram, it's really easy for you to follow your younger crowd because everyone's on it. Yeah. Maybe a little harder for me. Um, not everyone's on it. I know plenty of people that don't want that. Uh, I'll bring up an example of a realtor that did some uh, branding. Um, didn't cost her anything. She went out and she uh, was on a school bus, uh, I mean the pickup line at school. Hardly any kids take the school bus anymore, right? It's like, you know, there's a pickup line like 200 cars deep. I was one of them for years, and we pick our kids up at school. And she was a realtor handing out flyers. And it wasn't about herself. It was about the school, the school events coming up. But if she knew she did this for years, even in the rain, that she was going to brand herself as someone who's connected with that school, who's connected with the families, and that's how she branded herself in that one school district. And she sells a lot of homes in that school district. Yeah, and, and what does that get her connected with? The teachers. Teachers. PTSA. The parents. Right? The parents. Um, you're, I mean, you're then connected with everybody there, and you can be known as that schools or that school district, like you said, their realtor. And you don't think, even though she's handing out flyers, you know, to every car that came up, meeting all the parents, she didn't talk real estate, but did she not have her pin on, <laughs> said her name and what real estate company she was with? Of, of course. course. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. And I guarantee you, you have some people there that will say, oh, well, I'm actually thinking about you know, buying or moving. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, here's my card. Then she'll hand out the card. Exactly. But it's it's you're putting yourself out there and you're branding yourself. And again, that's a great example. It relates to our quote. What we said. That's not a brand she put out, but that's what people started to know her as. as right. Yeah. And I think I'll, let's. I'm gonna ask you something, Bill. Then um, about what you used to do with your community uh, in Skybrook, right? Yep. You used to host events, even at your place, like poker night or sure. you know, movie night, things of that nature. And so you branded yourself, as you mentioned, you were targeting family. That was your audience. You said, okay, so how do we target those people? Maybe it's events, community. I, I had a Halloween party. I had a Super Bowl party. Uh, did poker once a month Saturday. We'd take turns at my house. Um, and a lot of those guys over the years bought or sold the house with me. Or multiple. It was spending some time yeah. with them. And getting to know her. When I started playing poker, I didn't know one was a dentist, one was an endodontist, one was an attorney, one worked for Lowe's, one worked for Home Depot. I had no idea. Um, but they knew, sure enough, after a while, we all knew what we did. And uh, we became friends and we support, support each other. Those yeah. guys that say, if you're selling your house, you need to hire Bill Price. And then you took it one step further, didn't you? Because then you started getting the mugs, right? Yes. Yeah, Price's uh, community... Uh, like uh pub pub right yes yes yeah. yep I, I actually got uh mugs with everyone's name on it so when we played poker everyone had their wow. own glass 
So it's personalized. It, exactly. You know they would use it. And <laughs> on the back of it had, you know, Bill Price Realty Group. So there you go. I branded myself in a warm, fuzzy way. We got to play poker, drink some beer, and have a good time. Well, and there you go. And what that does, again, you, you looked at your audience. You said, here are the people that I'm going to target. What's the best way to get front of mind uh, with them? And having them over at your house, I can't think of a much better way, uh, you know, once a month um, to keep branding. And it didn't so. cost a lot of money. It didn't. Uh, but I want to bring up our, our side here and kind of go through these, the different process of what a brand represents yeah. again, right? Um, so again, the audience, your niche, your message, your value, these are very important sure. things, um, you know, as far as what, uh, what your brand represents. But I think what, what also represents, and the big key one on here, um, is trust, okay? You want to create a brand that people can trust. They trust that this is something you own and accept. So what, what that means to me, I don't know about you, Bill, but what it means to me is, is commitment, right? Commitment to... Being yourself. Um, you always give the example. You're like, just go out and meet people. Don't care what it is. It could be bowling. Yeah. We're not making fun of bowling, bowlers, right? No. Um, but if, if that's, if that's your, your, your gig, if that is, that's what you do, that's your network, own it. Own Put it. a bowling ball on your marketing, on your branding, yeah. right? Um, be different. How many realtors do we see out there? Their logo is a, is a house. Right? All the time. Listen, Nick, I branded myself one time by mistake with like a wine club. So it was at the local grocery store. They called me and said, listen, we have a wine bag. And it's a white, uh, white bag, purple and black lettering and, black and red, and really stands out. Um, and for X amount of dollars, you can purchase like 50,000 wine bags. It'll last a year. And every person that comes into our grocery store buys a bottle of wine. We stick it in the bag. And there's a big picture of my big head and, you know, Bill Price, hire me, whatever. Well, then all of a sudden I got an invite to a wine club, you know. I had no idea that I would make a connection. But I would get people all the time say, hey, we're drinking with Bill Price tonight. And it was a picture of the wine bag that just came from the grocery store. So um, I got branded in a way that I didn't think would happen. Well, they, so, so then subconsciously those people knew, well, if I need a drinking friend, I can always have Bill you Price. Call Bill, he likes his <laughs> wine. <right? laughs> exactly. So... Uh, let's do some review because I think this is very important because um, what we're talking about today is, is mindset. We're talking a lot about, again, what I mentioned earlier, define your audience, understand what your value that you're offering is sure. because that value has to solve the pain points that your audience has. So again, for, for uh, you know, the younger generation under 35, the, the buyers that I might be targeting or sellers, it might be how do I get into the market? How do I buy my first home? Or maybe how do I list the home that I bought and move up or down, right? At whatever it is. And, you, and yours might be completely different. All right. Define your niche. Just figure out where you're going to go after, what target audience that will best brand to your needs and their needs. Exactly. So once you find that perfect marriage of, okay, here's the right way to communicate the value that I can provide for the people that I'm targeting and selecting, then what you can do is that's how you start to define your budget and get into all these other steps that we talk about. So if you're talking about action, I want everybody to go write down what is in a sentence, what do you represent? What is your brand, right? And it can be anything. Sure. It can be the bowling league, right? right? But own it. If that's you, if you're the bowling realtor, own it. We know a couple of realtors um, from a team that we mentioned many times up here, um, and uh, he's actually involved in NASCAR, one of the largest teams um, in the sport. And so I told him, first thing we, he met with me, consultant of marketing said, you know, what should my branding be? I said, man, to me, it's obvious. Everybody knows you because you're on TV sure, yeah. every week, you know, at these big races. You got to have a race car in your branding. You're the NASCAR realtor. Start your engines. Let's find a home, right? That's a great one. And make it fun. You know, exactly. if you like to play golf, you like the bowl, you like to go drink wine, you know, if you can brand yourself with an audience that has your same likes, go after it. Why not? So everybody write down in a couple sentences, what's your brand? What do you represent? Then I want everyone to write down who their target audience is, age, demographic, the area, location, everything. Well, who are you targeting? And then I want everyone to come up with a couple messages and that defines your value proposition, right? And then you're going to use all that to build your marketing. And once you have that written out, put it right on your goals and your budget and your values and make sure you see it so you can always be defining that every week. Absolutely. Be real, be sincere, and your, your, your brand uh, will be accepted with warmth. Be realistic with yourself, too. Yeah. Like just own it. Just be who just you are. It. So, you want okay. to introduce our guest? Okay, week? so we have a great uh, guest with uh, branding, uh, does a lot with social media. Uh, you really like the aspect that they bring to us. 
uh, and to you guys, you're going to learn a lot. So get your notebook out and your, your pen and take a lot of good notes. Um, so at this point, uh, uh, we're going to get out of here. You guys can go watch that video and we'll see you next week. <laughs>